I think sometimes we do get the impression that as a woman, we don't have have what it takes to really shape the way that society functions. But um, there's a very familiar story in the Bible that I wanted to start with. And it's going to seem probably kind of strange to start here as we talk about shaping culture. But it's a familiar story in the book of John, uh, chapter four. And it's about uh, the woman at the well, the Samaritan woman. So it says, you know, Jesus knew the Pharisees had heard that he was baptizing and making more disciples than John, though Jesus himself didn't baptize them, his disciples did. So he left Judea and returned to Galilee. Verse four says he had to go through Samaria on the way. That to me is such an interesting verse because in fact, he didn't have to go right, right. <laughs> through Samaria. Um, it was actually not, um, it was not uh, expected right. that he would go through Samaria because of the culture of the time. Right. And yet there was a woman in Samaria that he had to meet at the well. And we know the story about how he comes upon her and all that. But what was interesting to me is this woman, she goes to the well in the middle of the day, mm-hmm. When, of course, the other women would go in the morning when it was nice and cool out. She goes in the middle of the day because she doesn't want to be seen. And Jesus meets her at the well and begins to speak prophetically to this woman. And, of course, she's first of all like, why the heck is this guy even talking to me? Like, do you not know who I am? And Jesus begins to speak to her in such a mighty, powerful way that it changes the way that she even sees herself. And to me, I think what makes the word of God so powerful for women is that if we let it, it will meet us right where we are and it will change the way that we see ourselves. Mm -hmm. For me, this became so real because um, I've mentioned in several of these uh, shows that I didn't grow up in a Christian home. Um, As a matter of fact, the home that I grew up in, there was a lot of dysfunction and abuse. And Mm -hmm. my mother told me that I was stupid, that I was fat. And I I grew up with this understanding that I was less than, essentially. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But when I went to church for the very first time in the sixth grade, the pastor, he was preaching a sermon. And he said, God is a father to the fatherless, Mm -hmm. which I had lost my father at a young age. And and that sermon, it, it activated something in me. And I immediately was like, Okay, well, then who is this God? And at 11 years old, I started on my own faith walk Mm -hmm. to discover who God is. And it was through that journey that I found out, and we've been talking about these verses, but they are so real to me, Mm -hmm. that uh, God knew me before Mm -hmm. I was formed in my mother's Mm -hmm. womb. So even though my mother said to me that she didn't want me, that I was a mistake, I was clearly designed intentionally on purpose. Mm -hmm. And that changed the way that I saw myself. And I I also discovered that I was fearfully and wonderfully made. Now, this is a child who was told that I had a learning disability. I was told that I was a bad child because I was Mm -hmm. acting out at school because of what was happening to me at home. Suddenly, how I saw myself changed because I had an encounter with Jesus. Mm -hmm. And the reason why I wanted to start our conversation here is because we as women cannot shape society until we first allow the word of God Mm -hmm. to shape how we see ourselves. Right. And many times I think what we do is we look over the fence at somebody else and we see, oh my gosh, she has 300,000 followers and oh, she's speaking at these large conferences. That could never be me. And Jesus is saying, what makes you think that you are somehow less than? Right. What makes you think that I right. created you on accident? That somehow you, you know, you slipped through the cracks, mm-hmm. right? And you, you showed up on the scene, yeah. but you have no purpose and you have mm-hmm. no calling. Um, I do believe that as women, if we allow the word of God Mm -hmm. to open our eyes to the fact that we are here on purpose, that we may not change the world, but we will change the part of the world that God has called us to. And that could be our home. Mm -hmm. That could be a cubicle at an office. Or it could be a major platform, but wherever God has called us to. Oh my gosh, I love that story so much because not only did Jesus enter into her world and not only did Jesus offer her living water and not only did Jesus know about her five husbands mm-hmm. that she had, he knew all these things. And still, But at the very end of that chapter, it says, and she went into town and many believed yes. because of this woman's because testimony. Right, because of her testimony. Mm-hmm. And so she was a changer right where she was because God changed her life. She yeah. went back and said, you're not gonna believe I've met the right. one who calls himself yeah, right. the Messiah. And many believed because she was a missionary. She a lot of people call her the first evangelist. Yeah, I love. I've scripture. The more you study scripture, the better it the gets. layers. It's yeah. just yeah. Oh, better, gosh. And better, and better. It's Living like word. holding a diamond up to the light. But not too long ago, because we 
all, oftentimes she's castigated yeah. as a woman with a sleazy reputation. Yeah. And that's how culture has painted her. You study first century culture, it's mm -hmm. very unlikely that she had a tawdry reputation mm -hmm. because they would not have married her. Mm -hmm. Men would have been with her, yes. but they wouldn't have given her a certificate of marriage. Yep. So modern theological, mostly consensus, is that she probably struggled with infertility and was very beautiful. Mm -hmm. Because otherwise, men would have used her for sex, but they wouldn't have given her a certificate of yep. marriage, certainly not five times right. over. Mm -hmm. And so you go, goodness gracious, even that woman has been marginalized unfairly. Yes. Yeah. Wow. yes. Because she yeah. probably wasn't a woman of ill rep repute. Mm -hmm. She probably couldn't bear children. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And you go, goodness gracious, how quick we are to pile on wow. yep. instead of to go, let's back up, even with the people in our life to go, how does God see them? Mm -hmm. um, because we keep saying we need to start there. Yeah. But I think in order for us to actually shape, reshape culture, we also have to see each other as a Mago day. That's right. For me to even want to yeah. change culture is to go, you bear God's image, mm -hmm. even if you don't know him as your savior yet. How can I better respect and love well these okay. image bearers mm -hmm. that I get to be around, that that's their okay. cubicles next to mine yeah. or their kids play with mine? Or mm -hmm. I, I think that's part of shaping culture is to actually respect and love well mm -hmm. the culture that he's sovereign, sovereignly woven Amen. us into. I hope you enjoyed this video. Subscribe today and you'll never miss a new upload. And don't forget to check out our Better Together shop. Thanks for being a part of our community.